This reader interview is sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. All right, so we have Sierra Reynolds. How are you doing, Sierra? I'm well. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> <laughs> Sierra, you are a, a patron of the podcast, but I don't recall seeing you make any, very many comments like on Facebook or Reddit or anywhere like that. No, I am so tech literate. I am such a little old woman at heart. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bystander. I read a lot of comments and stuff, but I, I really chime in. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, every now and again, but intimidating. Everyone's so smart and has such great theories and thoughts and stuff. It's kind of hard to keep tabs on what's been said or yeah. where. Well, are you ready to play the game? I guess so. Okay, terrific. <laughs> Let's see. Well, oh, first encounter with a wolf story. Uh, well, my first encounter was with Book of the New Sun. Um, and I was living in Flint uh, a few years back and dealing with the lead crisis and stuff. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Lots of fun. Uh, my boyfriend at the time was in Chicago. And so we were kind of looking for you know, activities we could do long distance together. And we decided to read a book. And so he sent me a copy of Shadow and Claw, um, which he had read before, but decided he needed to revisit. <laughs> and I'm sure he still regrets that to this day, because I still <laughs> him with <laughs> ideas and questions. But uh, at the time, it was kind of one of those, I read Shadow in maybe a couple days, and I enjoyed it. And it was interesting and it was, I thought it was beautifully written, but I was also <laughs> so brain fried and there was just so much going on at that time that I didn't really know enough of how to like proceed. And there, you know, I wasn't really grasping exactly what was going on. I really didn't have any context for how to read it yet. Mm -hmm. And so in waiting for my boyfriend at the time to kind of catch up with me, <laughs> it kind of fell by the wayside and I kind of forgot about it for a couple of years. And then uh, after I'd moved to Chicago and was not dealing with lead poisoning so much anymore, <laughs> I had uh, an opportunity to pick it up and kind of was perusing it for, I think I was cleaning or something and was like, oh, hey, this, I forgot about this and kind of started paging through it and kind of piqued my interest again. And I was able to kind of revisit it with a little more context and Oh. Got a lot more out of it that time. Well, th that's, okay. So, yeah, the first time you just kind of – did you finish it? Uh, no, I only read through – I finished Shadow, but I was kind of like, that was cool, but yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I think when I had rediscovered it later, I almost had that same kind of, wait, what's going on? And then – in talking with other friends and, and reading more about Gene Wolfe as an author, I was like, oh, this is an entirely new way of reading. Okay. Like, well, you have some very interesting friends because it's all usually that's the complaint about, uh, you know, Gene Wolfe fans is that I can't find anyone else who's ever heard of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've kind of, I think I've drained my, my friend's interest in that particular topic. <laughs> I have a couple people who are kind of fringe interests and, you know, I've read a couple books or, you know, stories here and there, but are not quite as into the the notes and the rereading as I am. So. All right. So, all right, well, let's go with the, the next question. Favorite Gene Wolfe novel or short story, either or both? Uh, I think so. Obviously, I love Book of the New Sun, probably a very close second, but I think my favorite is probably Fifth Head, oh. the book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I obviously this book is too, but when I kind of think of that whole, you know, what book could you take if you were stuck on a desert island or something? Like, it seems like a much more, I don't know, a little easier to digest, I guess, and you know, easier to parse through. And it kind of helped me to attack Book of the New Sun in a new way. I think after I read that one as well. That's exactly the way I felt. Yeah, I felt I, I didn't I didn't really appreciate Book of the New Sun until I read. Yeah. Fifth Head of Cerberus. It was a good exercise in that, for sure. Yeah, and they're both, in my opinion, they both break the envelope for the novel in different ways. And yeah. Kind of like, I mean, Fifth Head, most obviously, because it has a novel that's basically existing in the right. spaces between three novellas. But Book of the New Sun, too. Yeah, and 
they both feel very pertinent to our time in different ways, I think. Uh, Fifth Head always makes me think of like Elon Musk and his, you know, Mars ventures and the kind of <laughs> idea of like, hey, what happens when a, a sentient species kind of gets ahead of itself? Yeah. Kind of takes on projects it can't quite handle yet. And <laughs> it's like a, uh, a useful piece of literature for our time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Favorite wolf word. This one's really tricky for me. I don't know. I mean, I love saying cacogen just because it's a fun word. I think we should kind of bring it to mm-hmm. the, the normal lexicon and try to just normalize it. But uh, Okay. What would we actually apply cacogen <laughs> in a way that wouldn't just be totally insulting? I think mean, I mean, everything. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair. I identify myself as a bit of a cagaging. Historically, it means like an antisocial person. And so... Uh, oh, okay. In that respect, you can kind of throw it at anywhere. Like, God, Becky, don't be such a cagaging. Let's go to the party. <laughs> like, plenty of use. Oh, to- good point. Well done. <laughs> but I think that honestly, like in terms of favorites, I, I just love the way that Wolf uses names. Mm-hmm. And obviously they're obscure and weird and cool, but like the meanings and the you know definitions and the history of certain names can kind of yes. provide keys to certain puzzles here yeah, yeah yeah definitely and it's, it's yeah it's hard to tell i find like how much of it is coincidence and how much of it is planned because there's so many links and little obscure connections here and there between names and places and it gets really fun right yeah you don't know when you are going off and blazing your own trail or whether it's something that wolf lay down for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, exactly. That's the nature of Gene Wolf, isn't it? So very much a personal non-consensus theory about a wolf story or just your favorite one. Uh, so yeah, because I'm such a, a hermit and I don't go on <laughs> as many message words, I'm not totally sure where all the consensus necessarily are, but it's safe to say there's there's very little consensus in these stories is what I've learned. Yeah, I think that's probably a good, a good. I guess one of my favorites is the idea of Valeria and her familial connection to Severian and possibly being his twin, maybe. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my, my pet theories currently that I've been kind of playing with just based on a lot of the evidence from like the Twelfth Night yes. quotes and references. And, oh, and there's lots here to play with. Oh, Sierra, wait till we get to Wadillo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that's that's where she should be, right? If you, if you follow the the Twelfth Night connections, yes, that's where she should be, right? And her her husband, her second husband, who conveniently uh, exits the scene before Severian comes back, is also an interesting. <laughs> yeah character in there too yeah. it's a very uh, convenient name so yeah definitely yes so let's get play with okay and now most frustrating mystery in a wolf story any this one is a major top up uh because it could be it's a tie between jonas and and Hathor, i think because they're both such <laughs> people say it's the same <laughs> right, exactly that's right i'm like you know it might be the same question but <laughs> but they both have such interesting weird things and probably my my interest lies more with jonas because hathor is just kind of a creep but <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to know you hathor <laughs> right. like mm, you can wait i'm not sure about you but but there's just yeah there's a lot there to to unpack with jonas and he has a lot, obviously, to do with Jonah and the the big fish, as it were. But also, mm-hmm. the big tie, I think, is Janus, which is the Roman god of gates. Oh, I love that one. That's great, and I can f- affirm that Wolf is crazy for Janus. I yes, that's great. Yeah, there's a lot there, and he's a very interesting figure. Uh, he has a, some trysts with Jaterna, and has some some little kids running around in different areas of mythology that uh, one I think is Mm -hmm. connected to the Tiber and in various areas. But, um, and then there's also obviously the, the Jason and the Argonauts connection. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of interesting things. And I think that there's some fun overlap in the 
when we look at like Yada and his search for Max Alindus, who he can't find on the river, um, and then looking at mm-hmm. obviously Jonas or yeah Jonah and looking for uh, Elenta, who is a whole other right. <laughs> mystery in her of and then Hathor and his his little uh, sex doll figure, <laughs> <laughs> like particularly when we look at like the the definitions of the names too, like you know Jonas means dove. And uh, Yolanta is Violet, and so there's a lot of <laughs> themes there bouncing around. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, oh, that's a good one. Yes, I'm not. I'm not sure I was ever aware of the Violet's connection with uh, Yolanta. Yeah, it was something I was recently looking because I regularly forget what I've already kind of looked into and have to revisit. Stuff. I have a, a memory very unlike Severian. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> anything. And so, no, no, mine's like an attic where I, oh yeah, I remember this. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. It's like once it's like in front of me, I'm like, oh, right, right, right. I remember writing that three page list of things that <laughs> connected. But so I've been going in and revisiting all of the name definitions and trying to piece together those. And oh, you've got it. Yeah, you've got it. You've been keeping your light under a bushel. <laughs> you've got lots of good stuff. Oh yeah, you you need to be much more vocal. <laughs> I'll make an effort. <laughs> oh yay! Yeah, that's terrific. No, no, you've got you've got some really good stuff. I'll stop being such a package and and try to be a little. Better. That's right. <laughs> Come on, oh, Sierra the Haradili. So yeah, the, well this is this is no, this is really good. This is I did I didn't know what I was walking into. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, you've given. Yeah, well, that's often what I hear from my friends who have <laughs> unwittingly let me know that they were interested in Gene Wolfe at some point or another. So. They also didn't know what they were walking into. And um, fr- frankly, that's what a lot of people discover when they interact with me about a wolf story. So I can, I can relate. I can relate. Kindred spirits. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this was great. This is really good. And yeah, you've just, you just added a whole couple new threads coming off of Jonas. So that's... Uh, that's, I mean, the thing with Jonas, he's got so many threads. It's like you start pulling one and yes. you're unraveling it and then it's tied up with this other whole different embroidery and it's... Yes. Infuriating and also a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, well, Josh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. This is really good. Yeah. Thank you for, for your time. Of yeah, and thanks for making the podcast. It's so much fun. Well... We didn't plan on it. We thought it was just going to be a dry conversation between the two of us. So, okay. Um, let's see. Anything else? You 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 have anything else that you were hiding from us all? Oh boy. I mean, notebooks full somewhere. But <laughs> <laughs> top of my head that I can think of, unless you have anything that seems pertinent. But okay, we'll dig them out. I want to hear them. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You too. This was, again, entirely sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. You can go to patreon.com slash rereadingwolf to play a part in bringing other amazing things like this into the world. And if you want to take on the five questions with us, reach out to us by email or one of the other methods listed in the show notes of this episode.